Hello, everybody. It's Birding Basics. I'm Jeff Hill, and today I'm going to talk about how to get started birding. Getting started. That's the hardest part of most activities, and it's certainly the hardest part of birding. Uh, it can seem overwhelming uh, to get to the point where you can uh, go around with binoculars and name birds. And I think making matters worse, people that are new to bird watching are just bombarded with advice that I don't think is helpful and, and that actually makes it more stressful and more frustrating uh, to attempt to get into birding and, and causes a lot of people to, to really never get started, to give up before they really have a chance. I've been teaching uh, how to begin as a bird watcher for 25 years. I teach over 50 students a year in my ornithology class at Auburn. I also uh, lead a lot of uh, bird watching tours. And over those years, I've thought a lot about what works and doesn't work uh, in terms of advice for beginning birders and, and really what beginning birders need to focus on as they get started. And that's what I'm going to uh, share with you today. So let's start by understanding what we're doing. Birding is no more or no less than putting names to wild birds. There's a lot of other things related to birding, but that's the essence of this activity. If you can look at and put a name to uh, wild birds, then you're a birder. And, and this is not all that hard of a thing to do. At the very end, points in this, so the, the, the hardest situations, birding requires a lot of skill. But, but getting started, if we keep it simple, remember this is what we're doing, it really isn't that hard. And it's a lot of fun. Okay, consider. Turkey, goat, horse, sheep, pig, goose, rabbit, cow. You say, congratulations, Dr. Hill, you have the skills of a four-year-old. And indeed I do have the skills of a four-year-old. How did I get those skills? How come I can put a name to each of these animals without thinking about it instantaneously? And they're just silhouettes. This is because I learned the names of these things, of these objects in my environment when I was a little kid. So the human brain naturally organizes objects into categories. This is, this is how we process the world around us. It's a key part of cognitive uh, assessment of our world, of, of thinking. Um, and, you know, it starts early. You learn that you can categorize things by color and by shape. And then we learn the names of all of the things in our environment. And, and so this is me sitting with my son, Trevor, when he was, I don't know, about two years old. And... This is pre-reading. What we're doing is naming the objects in his picture books. And the, the thing that your brain is ready to receive and will rapidly grasp is how a set of objects is all unified within one name. So I, my son was really interested in trains. We look at lots of pictures of trains, realistic pictures of trains, cartoon trains, you know, uh, uh, passenger trains, every kind of train you can have. And it, amazingly quickly, he learned what a train was. So if he saw a completely novel thing that met his, his brain's assessment of a train, he would put the name train to it. So this, this is all birding really is when you're getting started. It's the same thing we did as uh, two and three-year-olds putting names to all the objects in our world. So when I was showing Trevor animals in a picture book, we would look at horses. We would look at thick animals that I called a horse and we'd look at thin animals that I called a horse, large ones and small ones. And very soon Trevor would, without a mistake, name horse as the animal when it came up in, in his picture books. Now I didn't tell Trevor, oh, look at the ears, look at the mane, uh, look at the hooves. I simply showed him representations of horse until he had a what's called a template. He had the, a horse concept in his head 
And then he could convey that concept to a whole range of horses. And of course, Trevor at four or five years old and any adult can look at just minimal representations of horses, just a few lines on a page. And I think everybody would have said for all of these pictures, yeah, horse, that elicits the name horse uh, from me. So this, this is gonna be the same thing with getting started uh, with bird watching. And by the way, if you've ever been out with a skilled bird watcher when, when you're just a beginner and they're naming birds with the most minimal information, barely seeing the bird, it's no different than naming these objects as horse with minimal information about the horse. Okay, so this is, this is what we're gonna emphasize for beginning birders. This is the way to get started and it won't be frustrating. It's no more frustrating than learning the names of any other objects in, in your environment. And so the way to put the names to birds is the same way that we named objects in, in, in the world when we were little kids. Don't focus on the parts of birds. This is the advice I think that beginning birders get that really is directed at advanced birders. When, what, once you get through the beginning stages of birding, you have to train yourself. It's not natural. You have to train yourself to not look at the whole bird, but to look at specific parts of the bird. But you cannot start out that way, in my opinion. It, it just gets too frustrating. This is why so many people uh, quit birding. Look at the whole bird. Get to know the whole bird. Your brain will create a template for that species, and then it will become uh, easy to uh, identify the bird. I was just thinking about this the other day. When, when I'm bird watching, the bird, I get a decent look at the bird and I, I just know what the bird is. If I'm, if I'm with friends, I simply say the bird and if I'm by myself, the name is just there. I know what it is. I don't, I don't look at the wing bars. I don't look at the leg color. I, don't, I guess I look at all of that, but really all I do is I just is, is when somebody I know uh, comes into view. I, I know the person, I say their name. I, I know who I'm talking to. Um, it's the same with bird. It's not about all the individual pieces of the bird. It's about the whole bird. And, and I can't emphasize this enough for beginning birders. Uh, get to know the birds in your environment. Then the names, applying a name to it becomes kind of trivial. This is a slow process. You, you have to get to know each bird uh, and, and start slow and move forward. But it's not hard and it's totally enjoyable and there's no stress and hopefully there won't be any frustration with this technique. Okay, so where do we meet the birds that are going to become the core group that we get to know and that become the starting point for, uh, for bird watching? Well, uh, it depends on where you live, obviously. If you live a suburban existence like I do, I think probably the best way to get started bird watching is to put up a set of feeders in your yard or on your porch and use these feeders as the place where you get to know a set of 10 or, or 12 or so birds as the, as the starting point for putting names to birds. At my house, we put the feeders right up on the rail of the deck uh, around the uh, screen porch where my wife and I sit all the time. So whether we're uh, watching TV or sitting at the table or sitting on our little uh, outdoor couch, the birds are right there. Sometimes they're only three or four feet from our, from our eyes. And I've been birding since I was 11. I knew these birds, but my wife is not an active birder and she didn't know all the birds that well. But I'll tell you, sitting so close to the birds has helped her know all the birds and, and, and eventually put names to, to all the birds. If you live in an urban environment, maybe with no opportunity to put up a feeder, almost certainly there will, will be parks nearby with birds that are habituated to people and that will allow close approach. The main thing is you wanna be at a place where there's a, a set of birds, maybe 10, maybe up to 20 that you see repeatedly, you see with no effort. They're not one off, so you're digging through your, your field guide trying to identify them. They're birds that you become very familiar with. And then the next obvious question is, okay, so I know these birds, how do I put a name to them? There's really three ways to 
put names to the birds that you've come to know at your feeder or on walks in the park. The first is one of the old fashioned ways. It's to connect with an experienced birder and have them help you put names to the birds. That, that's an excellent way to do it. Not everybody has ac access to a more experienced birder and it's particularly hard. This is being recorded in a pandemic year. Uh, everything's harder in the pandemic year. Alternatively, you can do it the way I did. You can look the birds up. And since I've de-emphasized focusing on specific field marks, this, this is gonna be a little bit challenging. Uh, and I made mistakes as a, uh, as a teenager uh, getting to know birds and looking them up. But you know what? That process teaches your birds even better. And, and I wouldn't be afraid of making mistakes. Anyway, there's way more resources now than there were even just a few years ago. If uh, you find that the, the static images and field guides aren't enough since you've learned the birds as moving objects in a world, there's now many excellent videos on YouTube, especially if you're focusing on backyard birds. For instance, my friend Lou Scharf has a, an, an excellent video. I'll put a link in the bottom in the information of this video about the identity of birds at feeders in, in the in yards in the southeastern U.S. The third way to uh, identify birds is, is new. And, and this is a breakthrough technology from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. They now have a, distribute a free application for your cell phone or computer known as Merlin. And, and Merlin is an identification platform. So Merlin gives you two ways to have a computer assist you in identifying a bird. First of all, if you can get a picture of a bird, and it doesn't have to be a very good picture, uh, you know, certainly not artistic picture, a picture that, that uh, captures uh, the, the uh, shape and size and, and, and pattern of the bird, that you can upload that to Merlin, and, and Merlin does, will do an amazingly uh, effective job at identifying that bird for you. you. Basically, you give it the picture, it gives you an answer, and then you can tell it if that's correct or not. So basically, did it, did it find your bird? Uh, alternatively, if you don't, if you can't get a picture of the bird, and that's understandable, I'm going to talk about birding photography uh, in a future YouTube, uh, then it, Merlin will ask you a series of questions, where you are, what you saw about the bird, what color was it, what was it doing, and then it will offer uh, explanations, starting from the most likely, given the information that you provided, and then going to less likely. And basically, when your bird appears, and you know your bird, so when you see it, you'll know it, then you'll have a name for that bird. But given that you're going to be dealing with the most common birds that you see repeatedly, getting names on those birds will not be hard. And, and this is it, this is the, the start of birding. Now, it's only a start. You, you will have uh, knowledge of only a, a small fraction of all the birds available to you in your area, but you should have some confidence, you have a base, of reference as you go forward. And I'll do uh, a YouTube on intermediate birding, how to proceed from the, the, the beginning foundation of birding. But basically it, the next step is going to simply be to build on what you know. Once you have a foundation of, of birds that you know, then as you see a bird you don't know, it becomes way easier to figure out what that is. And also to remember it because now you have you have a frame of reference. You know it's not one of those birds that, that you're very familiar with. It's something new. And you'll, you'll immediately start to think of how it's similar or different than the birds you know. And then when you get a name for that bird, it'll now fit into your growing uh, knowledge of, of local birds. And a bird at a time, and I think that's really the way to do this, a bird at a time, you will become better and better and more knowledgeable about birds. Well. I hope this has been helpful for, for everyone. If you, if you like what I'm doing with this channel, I'd appreciate if you would uh, click on the like button and think about subscribing. Thanks everybody and get out and see some birds.